Morning, church. Happy Sabbath. Glad to see all your smiling faces. Long weekend. That's always good, huh? Weather's cooling a little bit. We're so privileged to count our blessings here in Red Bluff with all the food we can grow here and the freedoms we have. And uh, we don't have to trample and step on one another as much as they do in the big cities. And uh, we're extremely blessed, aren't we? Welcome to our visitors. Do we have any visitors here today? <laughs> yes, our speaker. Our speaker's a visitor. Um, anybody bring a friend? All right, very good. We'll make those people uh, feel especially welcome today. And uh, don't forget, there's a fellowship meal following the service today. And uh, all are invited to that. And uh, let's see, what announcements do we have today? Um, on your bulletin here, you can take a look at those. Uh, 
nothing that's uh, really I need to mention. You could just take a look in the bulletin and read that. Uh, our pastor called me, a text me yesterday morning, Friday morning, around 7 a.m., and said, you know, I'm not feeling well, and uh, I'm under the weather. I guess he was traveling uh, to Kentucky and uh, got sick, and he says, I don't know who's going to preach. And uh, Emmanuel Roth is gone this weekend as well. And so uh, I said, there's no way I can do it. I, I it takes me like 30 hours to prepare a sermon. And I just, there's no way I could do it. And instantly my mind, Jim Air. And so I text Jim. He's sitting here on the front row and, and, uh, and he didn't even argue with me. It was like, he, he, he just said, how good of a friend are you? And uh, I said, I'm a good friend. He says, I'll do it. So uh, um, we're happy that Jim Ayer is here. And uh, if you don't know Jim, he, uh, he has been uh, instrumental with uh, Hope International, also with Adventist World Radio. And uh, now he's got... Did you guys get those little brochures this morning? Talking Donkey International. This is his new thing. And uh, I'll let him tell you a little bit more about it, if he's willing to do that. But we're happy he's here today and his family. And his daughter, uh, because Kira Roth is gone, is going to be doing our children's story, Mariah. So uh, we're looking forward to all of that. Um, The text that I chose uh, for a call to worship this morning is 1 Chronicles 29, 11. And it says, Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in the heaven and all in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted as head above all. I love that. I love that so much. That text is powerful. And as we celebrate our freedoms this weekend, July 4th, yesterday was Canada. Uh, grew up in Vancouver, British Columbia, and Canada celebrates their Independence Day on July 1st. I'm so glad that June is over. Uh, it's been Pride Month, and I'm just disgusted. And uh, I won't go into it, but I'm just so happy that the month is over. And, and that we can look forward to, uh, to uh, this month, July, and, uh, of course, it's Sabbath today. So uh, I'd like to have a, a prayer for our service today as a congregation and invite God's Spirit here. Let's bow our heads. Father in heaven, it's so good to be in your church today and to worship and to sing and to fellowship and to get to know you better and to get to know each other better and to minister to one another. We ask that the Holy Spirit will be here ministering to each one of us and to convict us and to help us and to guide us and to mold us and shape us into your likeness. We thank you and we ask for um, all to be according to your will this day. In Jesus' name, amen. It's now time for our singers to come out, our choristers, and we're going to do our hymns of praise. Good morning and happy Sabbath. We're going to turn in our hymnals to hymn 214. Oh, yeah. 
507 no i'm sorry 508 anywhere with jesus 508 with jesus i can safely go anywhere he leads me in this world below anywhere without him dear is good with Jesus I am not afraid. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. With Jesus I can safely go. Jesus I am not is a house of praise. Anywhere, anywhere, fear I cannot know. Anywhere with Jesus I can safely go. Anywhere with Jesus I can go to see. When the gloomy shadows run about me free, knowing I shall wake and never to know. With Jesus will be home, sweet home. Anywhere, anywhere, here I cannot know. Our next hymn is 632. 632. Misprint in the hymn and the bulletins, but it's 632. Can we all stand, please? I can sing to remember this 
has brought us every I love that lyric we just sung that things of earth will go dim and lose their value. Have you found that to be true? Yes. Amen. I was trying to ponder what I was going to say about tithe and offerings this morning, and I came across uh, Matthew chapter 6, and and uh, I'll just read it to you. It says, let the, the title on the top says, Do Good to Please God. And some of us do good to please man. That's the problem. It says, Take heed that you do not do your charitable deeds before men to be seen by them. Otherwise, you will have no reward from your heavenly Father in heaven. Therefore, when you do a charitable deed, do not sound a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, that they may have the glory from men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have the reward. But when you do a charitable deed, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, that your charitable deed may be in secret and your father who sees in secret will himself reward you openly. Now, this doesn't contradict just a chapter back where it says, in uh, chapter 5, it says, you are the light of the world, a city that's seen on a hill cannot be hidden, and don't basically hide your good works. It doesn't contradict that at all. It's basically saying that here... Jesus is condemning the self-centered nature of public religiosity. The acts of God. The acts should be God-centered, not self-centered. So with that thought, um, it's always been uh, 
when we give our, our offerings and our tithes to should be done happily and cheerfully and uh, and uh, you know we see the results uh, all around us when, when we do that because God loves to bless a cheerful giver and the offerings won't be picked up they'll be put in the, the boxes back there it's been a great time saver to do that and uh, our, our tithe has been quite steady uh, and uh, don't forget offerings because we need to keep, continue to run the school and and uh, keep the church maintained and upkept thank you for your faithfulness to those that, that uh, do their tithe and offerings uh, let's remember to do them why we're doing them and and uh, all belongs to god let's pray father in heaven we thank you for blessing each one of us uh, with financial uh, monies and uh, skill talents some with little and some with much and those that have much, much is required. And we ask that the tithe and the offerings that we give will be given, give you glory and honor and to spread the gospel to bring an end to the suffering and misery and not for the glory of men. Uh, we keep our priorities straight, knowing that you're the God, you're the one that deserves the glory and the honor and the majesty this is your, we're your people, and keep directing and blessing each one of us, helping us to do our part in this sick, sin world, and bring an end to it someday, wishing that none will be lost. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. All right, so it's time for our children's story, and... Uh, as promised, it's going to be Mariah. I asked her this morning, and so if the children would, I know there's kids here, and we're going to need you guys to get up and uh, collect uh, the little offerings, small little dollar bills or whatever you're inclined to give. This money goes to, for the school and to keep our school functioning. Uh, don't confuse this with the uh, tithe and offerings. This is specifically money that's given to keep our little Avenue school going which has been a real blessing to this church. Mariah, where's Mariah? Oh, right there. Okay, you're gonna, you're gonna be up here. I'll get you a mic, he's got a mic for you. Good morning. How are you beautiful young ladies this morning? Good. So I would imagine you all know what this is, right? What is it? A Bible. All right. Now who knows what God's second book to us is? Do you know what God's second book to us is? No? 
All right. I want you to look out the window. You can barely see it, but can you can you see out the window? Can you see some trees and plants out there? Yeah. So God's second book to us is nature and his creation. Now, do you have a favorite time of day? Yeah, what's your favorite time? Morning. Morning. How about you? Evening. 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 Morning and one morning and three evenings. Okay. You know what one of my favorite times of day is? It's the evening. And I have a special part about the evening. Can you guys guess what my favorite part of the evening might be? The sunset. You are absolutely correct. The sunset. Now, when you think of sunsets and when you look at sunsets, what do you think about? They're pretty. They're pretty. Yeah, they're beautiful. And sometimes in different parts of the world, they look different. All the sunsets don't look the same where we are. But you know what I think of when I see the sunset? I think of how God painted that sunset just special for me. So I want you to always, when you see sunrises and you see sunsets and you see the stars twinkling at night and you see the moon come out, I want you to think about how much God loves you. You guys are young. You get to go through a lot of trials in life because unfortunately here on this earth, Satan likes to terrorize us, okay? Because he doesn't like us, but who loves us? God. Absolutely. God loves us so much. So no matter what you're going through in life, as you grow and you get bigger, I want you to look at the sunrises. Take the time to look at the sunrises. Take the time to look at the sunsets and let those be a reminder to you of how much God loves you and cares about you. Okay? All right, you can go back to your seats. Happy Sabbath, church family. Today's scripture reading is found in Matthew chapter 22, verse 21. Matthew chapter 22, verse 21. And it says, They say unto him, Caesar's, then saith he unto them, Render therefore unto Caesar's the things which are Caesar's, and unto God the things that are God's. May God bless the reading of his word. It's time for the prayer, if there's anyone who'd like to come up and join me. Father God, we just want to thank you today for allowing us to even be here. Thank you for Jesus. Without him, we would be lost. Thank you for the Holy Spirit. Without him, we wouldn't be able to walk in your way. I pray today that you would be with us. Put your arms around us. Hold us tightly. Do not let us go, O oh Lord. Rain upon your, your spirit upon us. And help us to walk in your way every moment of every day and help us to realize the times in which we live. Look upon each and every person who's come today. Lord, put your hand upon them. Bless them in a mighty way. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Well, ponder anew what the Almighty can do. What can he do in your life? There's some exciting things God can do, isn't it? Well, uh, one thing Dr. Elloway left out is when he called me, I said, you owe me. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's some exciting things that uh, we've been doing, and that's Talking Donkey International. There's actually some of you here that support our ministry. Talking Donkey International, some people say, well, where did you come up with that name? Well, we wanted a name that non-Christians would just have absolutely no idea over. Matter of fact, there was a, a lady who called me the other day. She, she saw one of the programs and she wanted to talk more about it, uh, quite up in years. And uh, she'd, never, she'd never heard of the story. So I told her where it could be found. She says, you know, I've I've never really read the Bible. I just started reading it. She's over 80 years old. Just started reading the Bible and watching her programs. Um, but we also wanted a name that Christians would immediately know. But we wanted the, the dual application because we, we do a program right now. The series we're working on is called Country Wisdom. We don't shoot anything in the studio. We hate studios. We hate carpet, plastic plants, and and lighting, so we get outside and we get in nature and all other places. We had a tremendous time recently. If you've seen any of those particular programs, we uh, had permission to shoot at Noah's Ark in Kentucky. 530 feet long, four stories high. I mean, it was incredible. And God blessed in a, in a mighty, mighty way. If you ever get a chance to actually go there, when you begin reading uh, Noah's story and you're there at the Ark, it takes on a whole, whole new meaning. But I'd invite you to uh, keep the ministry in your prayers, if you would. Um, God has blessed so much in the, in the last couple of years. Now, we're, uh, as the ministry has been going on, we're, well, airing all over the world on, on 3ABN and uh, Amazing Facts and It Is Written and Secrets Unsealed and, and Better Life Television and all over uh, uh, United Kingdom and New Zealand and Australia and the Philippines and the list goes on and on and on. God is blessing mightily. Um, so please, if you would, keep it especially in your prayers and God will continue to bless and, and open that up. And if any of you'd like to support the ministry, you got a little card there today that gives you some info, a mailing address and some of those things. We would be happy to take uh, your charge card or something else. And we're really old fashioned. If you still have cash, we'll take that too. Um, also, if you give $12 or more, I wrote a a recent book here, The Plan of Love, uh, will send you, send you a copy of that. God does have an amazing plan of love. And we also have a, a, a store there. You might check out, uh, if you haven't done yet, your daily journey to transformation. If you want a new and exciting experience, a real exciting Christian experience, get the guide. It leads you through five days a week, about 20 minutes a day, but five days a week in getting to know who Jesus is in a whole new way for 12 weeks. We've had people say it's changed their entire church, changed their lives, and the list goes on and on. So if you get a chance, check that out too. What time is it? Well, let's see, it's uh, 1119. No, that isn't what I'm really thinking of today. What time is it? We as Seventh-day Adventists should know, right? We should know what time it is. All scripture now, how do we find out? Well, all scripture is God breathed. God breathed scripture, profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man or woman of God may be perfected, thoroughly furnished in how many works? Every good work. God wants us to bring us from where we are to where he wants us and where he wants us to be able to sit with him in his throne and rule the universe. When he comes, amazing thing. Second Chronicles 20, 20 says, believe the Lord your God, so shall you be established and believe his prophets and so shall you prosper. He gave us the word of God and he also gave us prophets to be what? Prosper. Do you want to prosper today? Apparently a lot of the Seventh-day Adventist church doesn't want that today which is also an interesting indication of where we are in time. At the end of time, God's prophet says the church may appear is about to fall. It does not 
but it appears that it will. When you see that, know that we're at the very doors. For the Lord Jehovah will do nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. How much will he do? Nothing. And he'll reveal it through his prophets. We have not obeyed the voice of Jehovah our God to walk in his laws, which he set before us by his servants, the prophets. Second Kings 22, interesting story. Josiah was brought the law. They found the law after been buried for so many years. He gets panicked. He reads in the law and he says, please, he takes all of his top men and he sends them to go inquire of the prophet. What does he want to do for revival? Go inquire of the prophet. You want revival in your life? Go inquire of the prophet. The Lord continued to send prophets to warn his people because he wanted to spare them. He wanted to spare them. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. Remember, Jesus stood up over the precipice, looked down on Jerusalem. You were killing the prophets and stoning those who were sent to her. How often would I have gathered your children together, even as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings, and you would not. What was the gathering mechanism? What is the gathering mechanism? The prophets. The prophets, the gathering mechanism to gather under his wings. You want to be gathered under his wings? Don't reject the prophets. It was interesting, O.A. Olson who was the general conference president at the time. He had John Harvey Kellogg, who was leading, you know, as, as the, the uh, tremendous doctor. Now, I'm not saying anything against doctors, but you know, doctors, when they get a degree many times, are, have a doctorate in everything. <laughs> and this doctor knew he could control everything, all the work, all the work. He was wiser than anybody else. And he and Olson formed this pact, and they did not need the prophet. She was just messing things up. And so and E.J. Wagner and, and A.T. Jones, they were just as much of a pain because they sided with the prophets. They were, they were saying things that she supported. So what did they do? Send her to Australia. Get rid of the prophet. We don't want her. This is what she wrote five years later to Olson. The Lord was not in our leaving America. The Lord did not plan this, but he let you all move after your own inquiries. Our separation from Battle Creek was to let men have their own will and way, which they thought superior to the way of the Lord. They thought superior to the way of the Lord. So God said, okay, go ahead. Ellen, go over to Australia, which he blessed in an incredible way. The things she wrote there and the work she did there had blossomed mightily. The work could have happened in the United States no, no, not for the men, though. Woe unto you, for you build the sepulchers of the prophets, and your fathers killed them. We, we after they die, we, oh, yeah, we, we did all this great worship. We did all these great things, you know. We're on the very verge of the time of trouble, brothers and sisters, and perplexities that are scarcely dreamed of are before us, the prophet says. The inhabitants of the world are fast becoming as the inhabitants of the world in Noah's day who were swept away by the flood. You want to know what it was like in those days? Turn on the television today. Read what's in the headlines on the internet. And as the inhabitants of Sodom and were consumed by fire from heaven. Dr. Elloway mentioned some of this today. You know, June. Yeah, interesting month. God has always given men warning of coming judgments. Those who had faith in his messages for their time and who acted out their faith in obedience to his commandments escaped the judgments that fell upon the disobedient and unbelieving. The time of test is what? Just before us. For the loud cry of the third angel has already begun in the revelation of the righteousness of Christ, the sin-pardoning redeemer. What time is it? Time of test is right here. Loud cry, it's already begun. That's what time we're in. But you say, Adventists have preached about the coming of the Lord for more than 150 years. Nothing has changed since I was a kid. No, you know, maybe I was born and raised an Adventist. I've heard this since I was a little bitty kid. Nothing has changed. Oh, I would submit maybe you don't have your eyes open. First, knowing this, that 
there will come in the last day scoffers walking according to their own lusts and saying, where's the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they are from the beginning of creation. You see these things, you hear these things of the brethren in the church saying this? It's another sign of the times in which we live. We are told to draw warmth from the coldness of others. Draw warmth from the coldness of others. Jeremiah 7 says this, Obey me, and I will be your God, and you will be my people. Live the way I told you to live so that things will go well for you. But they didn't obey me or pay attention to me. They followed their own plans and their stubborn, evil ways. They went backward and not forward, became impossible to deal with, and you were worse than your ancestors. Jeremiah, you will say to all the things to them, but they will not obey you. You will call them, but they will not respond to you. That's where we are today. Adventists have approached the edge of eternity at least two times in our past history, but we turn back. Had Adventists, listen to this, quote, had Adventists after the great disappointment in 1844 held fast their faith and followed on unitedly in the opening of the providence of God, they would have seen the salvation of God. The Lord would have wrought mightily with their efforts. The work would have been completed, and Christ would have what? Would have come ere this. She wrote this not too many years after 1844. It was not the will of God that the coming of Christ should thus be delayed. We, we as Adventists sit around and say, well, this has got to happen, and this has to happen, and all this, and this, and this. All these things have got to happen. No, it could have already happened. It did already happen. Everything was ready. For, and she continues on. For 40 years did unbelief, murmuring, and rebellion shut out ancient Israel from the land of Canaan. The same sins have delayed the entrance of modern Israel into the heavenly Canaan. Who's modern Israel? Yeah. In neither case were the promises of God at fault. It is the unbelief, the worldliness, unconsecration, and strife among the Lord's professed people that have kept us in this world of sin and sorrow so many years. So many years. Well, she also said, uh, 1888, 1904, said the same thing. God was ready to come, ready to pour out the latter rain and finish the work. Didn't happen. God's people turned and went another way. Continues the same old story on and on and on. And here we are, third time, third chance. Third chance. Think about this. We are living on borrowed time. Not long after 1844, 1888, 1904, in that time frame, at least two times the Lord was ready to come, ready to finish the work. And now here we are, clear out, 2022, almost plus. Think about it. Yeah, what, what, what's going on in your life? What's happening in your life? Let, let's go back just a second. If I can go back, there it was. Unbelief, worldliness, unconsecration, and strife among the Lord's professed people. Same sins as Israel. Same problems as Israel. And God is still looking for a people who will surrender everything to him. We are standing on the threshold of the crisis of the ages, he says. In quick succession, the judgments of God will follow one after the other. Fire, floods, earthquake, and war and bloodshed. There are stormy times before us, but let us not utter one word of unbelief or discouragement. There are many who do not understand the prophecies relating to these days. Are you one of them? And they must be enlightened. I love this little slide that put together here, the perils of the last days are upon us. Does that look like you, your spiritual condition? If they realized the nearness of the events portrayed in Revelation, a reformation would be wrought in our churches and many more would believe the message. 
while the bridegroom tarried, they all, how many? I hate to say this, all slumbered and slept. All, but there is a difference. You see, some had studied, some began preparing, slept kind of lazy about it, but some had the Holy Spirit, others did not. And at midnight there was a cry, Behold, the bridegroom comes. Where are we? Well, we're really, really, really close to midnight. Matter of fact, I think the clock almost passed midnight and God grabbed a hold of the hand and had been holding the hand. Just one click away. The restraining spirit of God is even now being withdrawn from the world. Hurricanes, storms, tempests, fires, flood, disasters by sea and land, each follow in quick succession. Sound like today? Sound like headlines right now? Oh, my, yeah. I don't know what happened to that last slide. I don't know. Anyway, our time is running out. Great changes are soon to take place in our world, and the final movements will be rapid ones. I submit to you that had you been transported from 10 years ago to today, you would never believe what's happening. 10 years ago to today, it's incredible the speed at which the world is rushing to the end of times. If you don't believe that, I, I don't know what to tell you. Huh. Well, this is cute. Uh-oh, well, let's see. Isn't that interesting? Well, let's see where we are here. Okay. We'll try this. I saw that we must wake up. Wake up and cry earnestly for the arm of the Lord to be revealed. It is fatal to sleep now. It is fatal to sleep now. Yeah, let's see. They got to get back a few slides if they can. Yeah, quite a few slides. You'll love this. We can blast through this. You get a quick preview. Well, that didn't work either. Okay. Do you think the devil wants you to see this? I don't think so. Well, let's turn the other way. You know, and isn't that just like things are? Diversion. Diversion. All the time, diversion. Okay, one more try. Disasters by sea and by land follow one another in quick succession. How frequently we hear of earthquakes, tornadoes, destruction by fire, flood, and a great loss of life and property. They are among the agencies by which he seeks to arouse men and women to a sense of their danger. God allows all these things. We might wake up, wake up. We are living in the midst of an epidemic of crime. Anybody can say hallelujah to that, you know, I believe this. An epidemic of crime at which thoughtful, God-fearing men everywhere stand aghast. The corruption that prevails is beyond the power of human pen to describe. We've gotten there. Every day brings fresh revelations of political strife, bribery, and fraud. Whoa! Sounds like that was written today, wasn't it? Every day brings fresh revelations of political strife, bribery, and fraud. Every day I watch the news and say, how can this be? What, what is the matter with people? What is going on? Well, we know what's going on. The devil is allowed to work more than he ever has. God is withdrawing the Holy Spirit from planet Earth. And when God withdraws his protection, what's going to happen? Simple, isn't it? Every day brings its heart-sickening record of violence and lawlessness, of indifference to human suffering, of brutal, fiendish destruction of human life. Hmm. Interesting. Every day testifies to the increase of insanity, murder, and suicide. 
Who can doubt that satanic agencies are at work among men with increasing activity to distract and corrupt the mind and defile and destroy the body? It's amazing. And this was written so long ago. How could that be? Well, it was written by God's prophet. And God sees the end from the beginning, and he wants to reveal to us where we are. So we might wake up and understand and get ready and be ready for the time of the end. Just, just think about it. You, you can't turn on any form of media and not know it. The spirit of anarchy is permeating how many nations? All nations. And the outbreaks that from time to time excite the horror of the world are but indications of the pent up fires of passion and lawlessness that, having once escaped control, will fill the earth with woe and desolation. My. Mandy Collins lives in Little Mountain, South Carolina, with her husband and three kids. The 38-year-old never owned a gun before, but then she says, with all the toilet paper gone and everything, you remember the toilet paper scare here a while back? My wife and I still store up extra now, just in case. Anybody else? You don't have to raise your hand, but... I guess the fear of the unknown and letting prisoners out of prison and just you know, decided, wanted to go ahead and just purchase one. Purchase a gun. Just get a gun. Uh, very interesting. See, U.S. gun and ammunition sales surge. Overall gun purchases, background checks up 69% from 2019 to 21. There's, there's the figures for you. You want 13 million here, 39 million this year, or 21, 38 million. 38 million, 38 million, you know, each year here. They, they estimate now, actually, there could be a billion, at least a billion guns in the United States. A billion. <laughs> and uh, the government wants to take them all away. Yeah, that, that'll happen. But guess what time it is? Guess what time it is? Yeah. The conditions of things in the world shows that troublous times are what? Right upon us. The daily papers are full of indications of all terrible conflicts in the near future. Men possessed of demons are taking the lives of men, women, and little children. Men have become infatuated with vice and every species of evil prevails. I think about Jesus hanging on the cross and Ellen White said the demons came in, possessed those at the foot of the cross. Can you see that happening every day in the news? Demons are possessing those that do not have the Spirit of God in their lives. And unless you're careful, brothers and sisters, you will find yourself among them. Fox News said, defund the police movement takes toll in New York City's crime rate law enforcement as shootings and murders spike. Shootings spiked 127% in New York City in the past year. Democrat uh, Councilman Robert Holden told Fox News, we have had well over a thousand shootings this year. A thousand shootings. How'd you like to live in the city? Dr. Elloway mentioned, you know, it's a little nicer to live here in a small area. I think this is still a big city. You know, you gotta come to Mount Shasta. But, uh, yeah, yeah, a thousand shootings. The deadly combination of closing Rikers Prison, getting rid of cash bail, defunding the police, and putting them under the fear of going to jail if they need to apprehend a violent suspect are all part of pro-crime atmosphere that emboldens violent criminals. What did they expect? What do you expect? I mean, it. There, there is, I don't know, what your beliefs are in some of those things. But in my mind, I watch this stuff and think there is no brain power left. They, they cannot be in control when they take away the police and they let criminals go. And they, one lady I heard the other day had been arrested in San Francisco 100 times for shoplifting. Arrested 100 times. They never, they just take her in and book her, turn her out. It's insanity, absolute insanity. The end is near. And every city is to be turned upside down, every way. There will be confusion in every city. Everything that can be shaken is to be shaken, and we do not know what will come next. Ah, but we as Seventh-day Adventists do. Because God gave us his prophet. Oh, that God's people had a sense <clears throat> of the impending destruction of thousands of cities, now almost given to idolatry. 
and almost given to idolatry. This one quote, I've shared it with many people over the years. This quote is only found in one place, one time, never mentions it any place else, in India, China, Russia, and the cities of America. Stop right there, don't read anymore. India, China, Russia, and the cities of America. When she said this, those nations were not players in anything. Nobody ever thought about those countries, really. But now she says, India, China, Russia, and the cities of America. She mentions them by nation, but the United States by cities. Thousands of men and women are dying of starvation. The money men, because they have the power to control the market, they purchase at low rates all they can obtain and then sell at greatly increased prices. This means starvation to the poor classes. And what? will result in civil war. There will be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. This is almost at the end of time. At the end of time in the cities of America. Do you think she saw ahead of time and said we need to get out of the cities and move to the country for a reason? Believe his prophets and so shall you prosper. Guess what time it is? Oh, guess what time it is? Thomas E. Ricks argued in 2017 article for foreign policy that the current political tension of the United States could escalate to asymmetric or irregular warfare with the help of increasing radicalization and digital propaganda and speculated of the likelihood of a second U.S. civil war in the next five years. Civil war in the cities of America. Wow. Wow. Time, brothers and sisters, is running out. Time is running out. The things we've normally done, the things that we think are the, the usual things, we need to ask God, is this what you want me to be doing? Is this what you want me to be doing, God? It's a scary prayer. But be open about it and ask God, am I doing what you want me to be doing? Oh, guess what time it is. Recent survey, 61% of Americans believe we could be on the verge of another civil war. Oh, how many scenes have you seen like this now? Go in, loot everything, take everything, and the police stand there and watch as gunny sacks of stuff is carried out the stores. When would we ever thought that could be possible? <laughs> Amazing. And you know, it was just a little virus, just a little virus. But think about it, a worldwide lockdown, just overnight, a worldwide lockdown. Never in the history of the world has there been such a universal control of humanity by government at one time. Sir Winston Churchill said, never let a good crisis go to waste. We thought it was a Democrat here a while back. No, it was Winston Churchill in another generation. Pope Francis likened the coronavirus pandemic to recent fires and floods as one of nature's responses to the world's ambivalence to climate change. Climate change. Oh, here we go. Climate change. Pope urged politicians to take drastic measures on climate change. Vatican City Reuters said Pope Francis challenged governments on Sunday to take drastic measures to combat global warming and reduce the use of fossil fuels, saying the world was experiencing a climate emergency a climate emergency. Moving beyond his 2015 encyclical, uh, Laudato Si, Francis called for prophetic action to spur governments to undertake drastic measures to achieve zero net greenhouse gas emissions and keep average global warming at 1.5 degrees Celsius. Hmm, interesting. In his toughest address yet, on climate crisis, he further warned that the failure to act urgently to reduce greenhouse gases would be a, what, brutal act of injustice toward the poor and future generations. It'd be a brutal act. Hmm. When I became an Adventist, I read these words, believed them, but then I had my doubts later on as I watched unions apparently lose their power. Quote, the trade unions will be one of the agencies that will bring upon the earth a time of trouble such as not been seen since the world began. I, I just couldn't see it. After, you know, being an Adventist for a lot of years, I kept watching and unions lost all their power. Bob, but have they? 
Uh, the time is fast coming when the controlling power labor unions will be very oppressive, she says. Again and again, the Lord has instructed that our people are to take their families away from the cities into the country where they can raise their own provisions for in the future, the problem of buying and selling will be a very serious one. It's better down here in Red Bluff for growing gardens. It's tougher in Mount Shasta. We should now begin to heed the instruction given us over and over again. Get out of the cities into rural districts where the houses are not crowded closely together and where you will be free. There it goes again. Boy, look at that. Well, sorry, guys. We're getting close, though. Last year, two million member service employees union was proud to become the largest labor union in the country to back the Green New Deal. AOC, the Congresswoman AOC, her, her Green New Deal, the biggest union in the country backed that Green New Deal. They're now supporters of it. And, you know, it makes sense. I mean, you cannot ignore some of the things. This was New Delhi. Remember when they shut everything down? This is what we used to, we'd go to New Delhi. This is what it looked like. You couldn't hardly breathe. And this is what it was when they stopped everybody from going out and driving. Yeah, I don't, as an asthmatic, I don't mind that at all. There's some good parts about it. It's just what it begins to be used for and how it's used. By defending Sunday, one defends human freedom, the Pope says. Sunday is the day of the Lord and man, a day which everyone must be able to be free. Free from family and free for God. Sunday must be a day of rest for us. Well, how can you argue with that? We've got to keep the planet in good shape. We've got to turn the planet back toward Mother Nature because she's trying to kill us right now because of the way we're taking care of her. Last week, Pope Francis said Catholics and Protestants were now enjoying a relationship of true fraternity based on mutual understanding and trust. He told Derek Browning, moderator of the Church of Scotland, who was visiting the Vatican as part of Reformation, that two traditions were no longer adversaries. No longer adversaries. After long centuries of estrangement and conflict, Catholics and Protestants marked the fifth anniversary of Pope Francis' the environmental encyclical, Laudato, excuse me, Laudato Si, with a message that although coronavirus is not directly linked to climate change for people of faith. The key to overcoming both challenges lies in prioritizing the common good. The common good. And so the day of rest, Sunday, centered on the Eucharist, sheds its light on the whole week and motivates us to greater concern for nature and the poor. Did you catch that? Sunday sheds this beautiful light on nature and the poor, and we need to all come together for the climate change, taking care of it all. It's all combined together. And this is a religion which Protestants are beginning to look upon with much favor, and which will eventually be united with Protestantism. This union will not, however, be affected by a change in Catholicism, for Rome will never change, says the prophet. God is moving to unite Catholics and Protestants as culture crumbles, says Peter Kreft. Huh. It's so interesting. All these different religious leaders now are looking toward Catholicism, coming back. And Janine and I have some really good friends with their son, who is a pastor in a, in a, a, a Baptist church, became a Catholic. He's posting online all the time now how wonderful and tremendous. And he goes on and on and on all the time about how great it is. It's amazing. I'm going to speed through this one here a little bit. Well, yeah, let me get go back to that. When Protestants shall stretch their hand across the gulf, you've heard this, right? The hand of Roman power, when she shall reach over the abyss to clasp the hand of spiritualism, when under the influence of this threefold union, our country shall repudiate every principle of its constitution. Yeah, then we may know that the time has come, has come. 
through the two great errors, the immortality of the soul and Sunday sacredness, Satan will bring the people under his deceptions. Or the former lays the foundation for spiritualism, the latter creates a bond of sympathy with Rome. Associated Press says Roman Catholics account for a bit more than 20% of the U.S. population, yet they now hold seven of the nine Supreme Court seats. Think about that. Seven Supreme Court justices are now Catholic. Um, Neil Gorsuch actually was raised Catholic. He goes to an Episcopal church, but that's virtually the rich Catholic. <laughs> yeah, that's what Janine and I went to. That we, we were married in the Episcopal church, and that's who we, we uh, were starting out when God touched our hearts. That's where we went for quite a while. And not that we were rich. It just happened to be that we knew the, uh, the father yeah, that uh, was there. We have how much time to lose? No time. What time is it? Well, the time is we have no time to lose. Every moment is precious. We know not how soon our case may pass, and we know not how soon our case may pass and review before God. Brethren and sisters, for Christ's sake, purify your soul, obey the truth, that you may have clear spiritual discernment. Can you afford to be careless and indifferent at the risk of losing heaven? Wake up, wake up. You need keen perceptions. Men may get up scheme after scheme, and the enemy will seek to seduce souls from the truth. But all who believe that the Lord has spoken through Sister White and has given her a message will be safe from the many delusions that will come in these last days. Read the great controversy and believe it. Believe it. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Shout a warning on my holy mountain, let all the people who live in the land shake with fear. The Lord's special day is coming. It is near. I saw that we must wake up, wake up and cry earnestly. The arms of the Lord be revealed. It is fatal, brothers and sisters, to sleep now. What is going on in your life? What is happening in your life? Let me tell you, God has the power. Whatever's going on, whatever's happening in your life, God has the power to change your life. God has the power to intervene and, and alter whatever's happening because God wants you in heaven. And, you know, no matter how much I read my Bible, I can never find a place where the devil ultimately wins. God's power is stronger. God always wins. And whatever's happening in your life right now, you can never find a place where God looks at your life and says, oops, I never saw that coming. You just can't. God sees the end from the beginning. He sees everything in your life. He sees everything that's been going on and everything that's going to go on. And he's got the perfect path laid out for you. And he will speak to you by the power of the Holy Spirit and say, this is the way. Walk in it. Walk in it. So I, I bid you today, seek to get to know him, get to know Jesus Christ, invite him into your life. The power of the Holy Spirit will come in and God will give you the victory. It's, it's not about you or me gaining the victory. We can't. We can't. But what we can do is get to know Jesus Christ. And when we invite him in, he comes in. He does the battle with the devil. He's the one who meets the devil in the desert at every temptation, every single temptation, and he beats the devil at every step, every turn, every corner. He'll do it in your life. He'll do it in your life, I guarantee it. So today, I'd like to invite you, if you want to follow God with all of your might, all your strength, I want, don't stand yet. I want you to stand. But I don't want you to stand just because your friend or your neighbor or your church fellow here is standing. I want you to stand only if you fully believe with all your heart that God can change your life and you want that change. You desire that change. Now, you, you can't do it on your own, but Jesus said through his prophet, we should pray this prayer, Lord, take my life for I cannot give it. Take my life for I cannot give it. We can't even give our own hearts. But we can pray that prayer. We can surrender ourselves to God. And God will come in and remake us. 
What time is it? Well, it is the very end of time. We are actually on the toenails of time. You know, we're not, a, we're not in the feet of iron and clay. We're all the way out on the very end of time. So it's time to get ready, get ready, get ready. So now is the time. If you want to say today, yes, God, I need you with all my heart. Take my heart. I can't give it. Please stand with me right now. Amen. Amen. And if you can't, you know, if you're, you're kind of getting to that time, you've got to have your crutches or your cane or your walker. That's okay. You can sit. God knows your heart. But uh, amen. Let's have a prayer, shall we? Father, we so desperately need you. Lord, twice, at least twice, you were ready to come. Wrap up this old world of pain and suffering. And Lord, because of your church, because of your people, the suffering has continued. Please forgive us. Please forgive us, Lord. Wash us and cleanse us with the blood of Jesus Christ. Lord, do take our hearts. Lord, what can we say? There is no more. Just take our hearts, please. You come in and you live in us. Each one here. Make it very plain what our lives are all about. Make it very plain of what we should be doing. What we should be accomplishing in you as we speed toward the end. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Our closing hymn is hymn 647.
Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your incredible love. We pray right now that your spirit would descend upon us and fill each and every person here. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.